Please, ladies and gentlemen, make, um, make welcome Miss Amy Keiko. Put your hands together for her. And she understudies my role as the director for the Confucius Center as well. Um, after I take on, I shift to my new office for the Samara Research Institute, then we will assist Miss Amy to uh, go on a full time directorship position. So thank you. Please welcome Miss Keiko. Shishini Jian Boshi. Thank you, Dr. Awe. Thank you for this opportunity given to me to present on the Confucius Center. I'll use this avenue to promote, advertise, and make awareness of the Confucius Center. You may be wondering what the Chinese characters are. Huang Lai Dao, Dolo Tai Dashwe, Confucius Yuan. Welcome to the Confucius Center of the University of Morocco. As you can see up there, it's a partnership between the University of Boroka and uh, China Open University. And this is the product that our office set up. I have been teaching on this hilltop for the last six years, but this year, my normal routine is always walking up that way, towards the girls' dormitory. And I have been asked several times, where are you going? I'm going up to, the, to my office, to the Confucius Center. And they ask me, what is the Confucius Center? And where is that? So I'll briefly um, explain, just like our great leaders and educators, whose ideas, messages, and goals have influenced us, like, uh, Bennett Narakobi and Samantha Sommer. China has their great philosopher, teacher, and a politician who is called Confucius. One of his popular quotes, Education breeds confidence, confidence breeds hope, hope breeds peace. That's one of his. Um, great quotes that his teaching philosophies had influenced and civilized China. Shemeshi Komji Shweyuan, what is the Confucius Center? The picture from that side is our current office and the logo, the green logo is the um, headquarters, the Han, Hanban or the headquarters Confucius headquarters in China. What is a Confucius Center? Confucius Center is uh, it is a program where a China University signs up, comes into partnership with a, a university outside of China, and they they sign an agreement and with the Confucius Institute, which is a, a, an organization that comes under uh, the Chinese government education. They provide financial assistance, they provide classrooms, teaching resources, and everything to do with the Confucius Center. They provide uh, great assistance. Kongji Shuiyu and Beijing, the background of the Confucius Center. As you can see on the picture, uh, the Confucius Center was established in 20. 18 under the leadership of Dr. Awi, and I must thank Dr. Awi for providing that great partnership with our external uh, partners. So can we give her a big clap for that? Thank you, Dr. Awi. So uh, as you can see on the picture there, the, the Chinese he is the vice president for China Open University. Is Mr. Yan Xiaotong. And we have our former uh, Vice Chancellor, um, Professor Sinabare, and our current VC on looking there was the Pro Vice Chancellor ARI at that time of the long season. The MOU was signed uh, in 2019. Beijing Kongji Shui Yuan, Li Jian Xian Mu. Proposed programs of the Center for CECR. One, we have um, 
Chinese, Mandarin, the language. The center will serve as a central hub for disseminating the Chinese language program. It will be taught as a course. Two, we have the research and publication. Oh, I need glasses. The center is aiming to be a center for excellence for intercultural research. The center will coordinate research by Chinese scholars and students of UOG, Eastern Highlands, and other provinces of Papua New Guinea. The center will organize conference, workshops, and seminars on matters related to Chinese affairs. Three staff and student exchanges benefits for UOG. The center will be receiving information, contacts, and organized support for the uh, implementation of staff and student exchanges with China, both incoming and outgoing. Staff members can go for professional development training in China. Student and staff from the University of Baroka can go for short-term cultural exchange to China. Staff and students have changes, benefits for China. The, um, students from Chinese universities covered under the MOU can be um, invited to the University of Baroka for studies either on short-term periods or for full-term degree programs in anthropology, Melanesian and Melanesian studies, Papua New Guinea affairs, and other fields of study. Students from Chinese university can attend the University of Baroka for training in English, cultural studies, and intercultural performances. Staff members from Chinese university can come for research collaboration with staff members of the University of Baroka and PNG. Chinese students can learn Melanesian culture and languages. The achievement Chenjiu woman, Chenwei Shuo what we have done so far. We have developed the Chinese, successfully developed the Chinese Mandarin program, and we have sent it to our partners and to China University. They are currently reviewing for their feedback, and they hope to send it to us by next week. And we will uh, have it revised, get it ready to. Uh, presented to our university senate for endorsement and it will be offered in semester two. Next, we have received COVID-19 medical supplies from the Chinese embassy and we did a presentation last year, November, to our clinic. We received um, test kits and face masks and our clinic has successfully used them up in the beginning when they were doing registration for students. Um, recently, the Shenzhen University of the Sandong, Guangdong province of China have joined a partnership because they are the IT hub uh, of China. So they're going to, they're joining in the partnership so that they'll set up our classroom, the Chinese classroom with IT and all the latest technology. Um, we're having good conversation and networking with our uh, with the Chinese embassy. We have partnership with the UNESCO Beijing. We have a Papua New Guinea rep there. We have good communication and network with them. How does the Chinese Mandarin language fit into the existing UOG program? Chinese Mandarin will be an optional course for those who wish to study. Chinese Mandarin, it will be taken as an overload course authorized by the executive deans and executive directors. Uh, students taking Chinese Mandarin must have good ac academic grades. Uh, offer it to our year one, so they'll be our registered students. Pathways for Chinese Mandarin language program. Pathway one for UOG students. Chinese Mandarin language course is open to all UOG students. For a start, it will be offered to undergraduate pre-service students. They will take this course as an optional course. Pathway two for the public. Chinese Mandarin will be offered to the public, such as diplomats, PNG government officials, and students with Chinese scholarships. They will enroll in this course through the 
the Lahara program, they will follow the same criteria as outlined in the flexible distance learning. So we are located at the girls' dorm level two of the Goloka building. So please come and sign up. We have the best office space and classroom area in the whole campus. As you can see, this side is our classroom, but it's not yet partitioned, but as soon as our program is endorsed, we'll have computers and this is going to be China for you. And I have one living example, though I, I studied in China, I intended to study in English to do my master's. I lived there for six years. How come my master's took me six years? Because the scholarship, I was the second batch when Chinese government started giving scholarship to Papua New Guineans. And the first batch and the second batch, we were forced to learn in Chinese. All instructions were given in Chinese. And that's how I stayed there for six years. They provided boarding and launching. They provided stipend, internet free, everything free. And they said, if you take everything free, you have to learn our language. So I have to, in order to do my study, and I failed once, so I have to continue studying. There were six of us at, uh, 16 of us at that time. Um, 10 quitted. The six of us went through and see what my Chinese has done for me. It has created me another job opportunity. So come, sign up. Thank you very much. Uh, beautiful presentation. Please put your hands together for me, say be careful. The next presenters, um, it's a, a collaborative presentation which will be led by Dr. Mechi Landu, who is the uh, Director for Biotechnological uh, Research Centre, um, and Ms. Winifred Duke. So please welcome um, both of them onto the stage. Uh, we are in molecular biology and chemistry, so we can already avoid the technical languages. So she will take you through, but uh, basically, in biotech, what we do, um, <coughs> For example, we, are, we work with now mushrooms with a, uh, a kind of a fungus. Um, fungi grow in environments where they compete with other organisms like bacteria. Now when they compete, they compete for food and stuff like that. And it's a very congested environment. So they're going to fight for the food and fight for survival. And to, in order to survive, they have to knock off the opposition. And the way they do it is to produce antibiotics. For example, if they grow together inside a septic tank, it's full of bacteria and fungi. Now they're going to fight for the food. Uh, so they produce antibiotics. Now our chemists can analyze for us the products that they, they produce using um, uh, some of the equipment. In biotech, what we do is we try to pump up the production of what they produce. <clears throat> it's like um, it's a, like a, you know the the, the, the fungus of tanks of uh, antibiotics, but they can only release small amounts to knock off the oppression. Now in, in, in biotech what we do is we find a tap. Find a tap so that to make money you you, you, you want to be able to produce big amounts of the antibiotics. So we find a tap and we open it up and we put it on lock so that the uh, production of the antibiotics will be in great amounts that we can use to, to make money uh, from. So this is what Ms. Duke is going to present. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Lalu. Uh, we'll take on from uh, way left. Uh, basically, our Center for Biotechnological Research to Center for Research and also Education. Uh, we um, come up with research and we uh, conduct research and we also engage students, especially the postgraduate and also undergraduate to participate uh, in the research for their degrees and also for their future. Uh, the center operated uh, since 2019, but in 2018 we did some preliminary work. That was uh, when I was doing my undergrads. We were trying to culture mushroom uh, outside of their uh, natural environment. And um, I completed my uh, undergraduate degree from there and then uh, we moved forward uh, with the focus of the research, which is on the uh, molecular side, 
more involved in the application of some, uh, what they call chromatin remodeling technique to activate and enhance the production of uh, the compounds. So we did that last, in 2019. We got some good results and um, we moved forward in 2020. That is where we started purchasing some of the chemicals that were used um, for cancer research and where we started off uh, the major pilot project for the center. Uh, at the moment, the staff members who are uh, under the Research Center are working under the uh, leadership of Dr. Amethi Landu. And I am the lead researcher for the pilot project. We have Mr. Anton Barris, who is the senior technical officer for the School of Science. And uh, we have Mr. Bosley Botting, who provides uh, chemical analysis leadership in the um, the chemical uh, um, processes. We also have Ms. Stephanie Bulake, who is also a graduate uh, of UOG. We engage as a, a research assistant, and Ms. Grace Boyle is our lab techni technical officer. All right, uh, the biotech is uh, what is called a biotech pilot project. It's uh, three years now we've been working. And uh, the title of the pilot project is Investigation of Antibiotics in Local Fungi Using Chromatin Remodeling Technique. This is a, a complex term in molecular biology. But basically, these are techniques that we employ uh, in the living body of fungi to activate the production of the compounds. So compounds, doctor said, uh, is not produced unless it is disturbed. So we are using uh, those chemical compounds to tap into uh, the biological entity or system of the family and then we can unlock and uh, enhance the production of the compounds. So under that uh, pilot project, we have different projects to achieve the completion of the pilot project. And uh, one is the upscale culturing of uh, mycelia. Uh, in in the uh, fungi domain, you have what is called the vegetative structure. That's when you go into the bush and you uh, uncover some of the debris, you will find like thread like structures growing under the um, decaying logs and leaves. And that is where, when the environment becomes stabilized, the mushroom develops. So, mushroom is a fruiting body. So, at biotech, we don't work with a fruiting body, we work with the vegetative part of the fungi. And um, we did all the optimization stages to as far as application of the treatment to the uh, chemical analysis where we used a high performance liquid chromatography technique. It is an equipment that separates the compounds in the um, extract. So we got all the profiling done for the target compounds and now we are moving forward to the upscale uh, that will, after that we will send it to Griffith and they will run the structures of the compound and we will know the kind of compound that we are working. Some of this compound may be antibiotic or uh, pharmaceutical, they might have pharmaceutical values and that will venture into the monetary uh, aim of the center. And uh, from the result in the upscale um, a characterization of the compound, we will move, we're also working um, hand in hand with the, this other two, uh, two research uh, project, which is uh, Genome De Novo. This is where we identify all the possible genes for the secondary metabolite or the compounds. And we also, this will also lead us to the identification of the species or the organisms you are working with. And the next, which is RNA sequencing, will uh, give us or show us the genes for the compound that are activated upon the application of the treatment. So these are the three um, research projects we are working right now at the center. Um, Genome De Novo project and RNA sequencing, we are engaging our undergraduate students 
uh, creating a path for them also to participate in such research for uh, the future of the research of the biotech. So we already have two students, um, quantum students from biological sciences, who will be working to extract DNA and RNA that will be sent to um, China for the sequencing part. The successes for the center, um, we successfully completed all the optimization stages that's for culturing um, fungi in the lab as far as um, the identification of the possible compounds that were produced upon the treatment. The center graduated 300 students with high distinction grade and we are working in collaboration with Nature Bank at Griffith University in Australia for the characterization of the compound. We are also working with the uh, University of Papua New Guinea because they have the facilities. Uh, we are working in collaboration with them and we are also working in collaboration with Queensland University to assist us in the structuring of the RNA. Alright, the future prospect of the centre, we hope to discover new pharmaceutical compounds. We hope to do more publication, both in the local and international journals. And we also hope to strengthen a strong collaboration between our partners. And the last um, prospect is to build bioreactor tank. All right, this is where the next arm of the biotech, which is on the monetary uh, value. So um, also in my uh, PhD uh, studies, I will be looking more in what is called creating the mutants. That is more uh, technical. Uh, we will tap into the biological system of the fungi and we will knock off some of the um, protein or some of the driving uh, mechanism that is restricting the production of those compounds in the natural world. So once we knock those uh, mechanisms out, we will open up the tap and then that fungi will become what is called mutant and we will culture them in very big uh, tanks for the uh, enhancement of the production of the compound. And of course, if the compounds are new and they have an antibiotic or pharmaceutical value, then uh, UOG can be able to trade for monetary gain. All right, uh, thank you very much. This brings to the end of the presentation. Thank you, Ms. Winifred Duke. Um, it's exciting to see that uh, very good research is being done here at the University of Doroka. I wish to acknowledge the work that Ms. Winifred Duke is doing and we wish you all the very best in your PhD studies. If you take off, please do remember University of Doroka and do come back. Thank you. Now you heard from the earlier speakers who talked about research fields and the potential of research opportunities in the School of Humanities, in the Center for Mother Nation Studies. You also heard um, about uh, research opportunities with the, with the Center for Confucius Education and Cultural Research. Now you also heard multiple research opportunities uh, for postgraduate study uh, through the School of Postgraduate Studies. And now you will hear from the School of Education and their research programs and the opportunities that um, presents itself for, for young minds and young people that we have in the auditorium. So the next presenter that I'd like to invite is Ms. Joy Asura, who is the uh, director for the Center for Education, Research and Publication. And so, um, she provides the research leadership for the School of Education um, and works very closely with the Executive Dean of the School of um, Education and uh, across the university, uh, especially in the School of um, Education, she provides that uh, research leadership. So we welcome her again. Uh, please give her another round of applause as we set up our presentation. Thank you. Uh, the overview of my presentation, I give a uh, brief goals of the Center for Educational Research, its objectives, purpose, programs, achievements, further future pro prospects, challenges. Okay, the first goal that we have at the Center for Educational Research is to dynamically involve 
academic staff and students of the School of Education in research opportunities, academic excellence, real world problem solving, and knowledge creation and dissemination. That's trying to create the opportunities for our staff and students so that we engage fully in research activities in the field of education. The field of education is so broad and has so many fields, different fields that we can tap into. So the goal is to dynamically involve our staff and students as well at the postgraduate level and to build a, a culture, a strong culture for research. As we can see at the, at the university, research is not, I mean, it was, you know, not to the le level of expectation. So we try to build that culture of research involving our students and staff to fully be involved. The objectives that we have is conducting research, researches in the field of education, preparation and publication of research materials or papers in the national and the international journals, uh, preparation and development of capacity building programs related to, to research, and organization of workshops, seminars, and professional developments. These are some of the objectives that we have for the Center for Educational Research to really produce, uh, carry out the research and produce uh, publications. The purpose for the Center is advancing scholarly activity through collaboration, cooperative research, research training, knowledge creation and dissemination. It's important that we are creating knowledge all the time. This is an institution, a university, which is at a high level and academics should be creating new knowledge and disseminating nationally and internationally. So that's one of the purposes. Creating pathways for scholars and students to be dynamically involved in research activities within the School of Education and the University of Goroka. Functions, the School of, uh, the Center for Educational Research functions as a think tank on education at the university level with interdisciplinary and multidisciplinary perspectives on education. We have a few uh, programs in the Center for Educational Research. Uh, the first one is the collaboration with the Institute of Postgraduate Studies, and that is uh, we provide our academic staff to do a uh, supervision of our postgraduate students. That's one of the key roles that we play. Uh, the next is the center seminar presentations, the famous seminar presentations that we have been uh, in previously, um, from maybe 2017 to 2019. We have been uh, conducting these uh, seminar presentations in our school, and now it is in a uh, coordinated effort with the um, Somali Research Institute where we all come together now. But uh, before that, we used to have a famous School of Education uh, seminar, presentations, series. And then we also have the professional development, which is a in-house uh, training capacity for our staff. Uh, next is the research development, which is very important. We have huge potential in there to be explored, meaning more strategic and proactive role is to be taken to engage staff and even students into researching in the specific fields of forming research teams, partnerships to work on proposal development 
and conduct research activities. That's one of the programs that we would like to see really improve in the School of Education. Uh, funding can be made available through the University Research and Publication Committee, the URPC, which is connected to the SR, SRI. So that's an uh, encouragement for our schools. Maybe some staff may, may not be motivated to carry out research because maybe we think there is no funding, but there's a way forward for us. Uh, the achievements in the last uh, years that we have is the seminar presentations that we have uh, in 2017 we had three presenters and we acknowledge these uh, uh, academic staff who have done the presentations who have done the presentations. 2018 we had a number of presentations. 2019 we also had a number of. Uh, academic presentations. Now those are the achievements that we have. Uh, the next achievement that we have with the Center for Educational Research is the, um, the uh, journal, the journal of teacher education, um, which has started publishing. It's a uh, volume one, issue one and issue two about um, uh, over 25, uh, about 25 articles have been uh, published so far in that, in that journal. The way forward, we plan to, is on research and uh, development. Uh, we need to work together so that we can uh, come up with um, capacity building programs so that we can enhance the research activities in the School of uh, Education. Funding as well. We can look at the uh, sources that we can uh, source funds. Uh, the challenges that uh, we have at the School of Education is um, really trying to, to motivate our staff so that uh, we can be fully and dynamically involved in the research activities within the school. I think that's a, that's a challenge for us so that we can meet the expectations that is given to us at the university, especially from the uh, Somali Research Institute. Uh, one of the uh, way forward that we think uh, is to realign our research activities with the uh, National Research Agenda and the uh, Somali Research Institute so that we can work uh, collaboratively. Okay, finally, in the School of Education, we have uh, three divisions. So, thinking of um, getting a representative from each school, from that represents the School of, um, the Division of Educational Leadership Management, the Division of Curriculum Inclusive Education, and uh, Teaching and Learning. And, um, we can form a stronger team that can work together on research development and guide our staff into engaging more in researches that will be done in the School of Education. And that team is a core team that can look into the different fields of education and we can conduct research in our, in our school. I think uh, that's the end. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Joy. Um, apologies for this technical problem. Uh, it's good that she was prepared. She actually typed her notes, her speech out, and brought it with her. So she's uh, following through. And I think that's an important uh, lesson for us as, as presenters. When we are uh, invited to do important presentation like this, we must always type our, our presentation and bring it with us. Uh, should anything happen uh, with uh, technical sort of setup, we can have a we have a fallback uh, plan to follow. So well done, Miss Joy. Uh, thank you for providing your perspective on 
the education research and also laying out the success story of um, the research institute. So thank you for that. Okay, so the final presenter that we have is going to be presenting for the Center for Natural Resources Research Development. Um, and the director is uh, Mr. Alois Drew, but he is actually on duty travel attending to a very important uh, um, our academic program and activity in Port Moresby. So he sends it up his apology and he's nominated um, Mrs. Binal Boyerit to present on his behalf. So please do make her welcome uh, and give her a round of applause. And I also uh, kindly ask uh, Ms. Binal to say a few words about yourself and then begin your presentation. Thank you. I am Vinel Boyerite uh, from the Division of Agriculture and Rural Development. My area of specialization is in agronomy and soil science. My colleague, uh, Mr. Drewa, is out uh, for official business. That's why I'm stepping in to um, take his place for the presentation. Okay, Center for Natural Resource Research and Development. Uh, when we say natural resource, we do not mean the non-renewable resource. Um, we mean the renewable resources. The purpose of uh, CNRRD is to support staff and students' research uh, related to conservation management and utilization of land, water, um, and organisms living in or on them. Um, what the staff have done so far, they have supported the students um, especially in funding or counterfunding and or provision of expertise, especially in uh, student supervision. They have supervised um, the postgraduate students and also some of the undergraduate students in carrying out their research. Um, staff and students research projects. CNRD has been sourcing external funding for postgraduate students' work. Um, example of um, such external funding um, is Christensen Fund, and other funds include Silicon Valley Community Foundation Grant and the PIU RNM um, RN multi funded project. The staff appointment to respective positions are in progress, and the center will have one director one senior researcher, two um, research assistants, and one professional assistant. The reporting structure, um, the two research assistants will be reporting to the um, senior researcher, and the senior researcher will then report to the center director. The center director will then report to the SRI director. Achievements and publications, um, as shown, this is some of the students' uh, thesis. The conference papers were also presented, and um, some of the papers were published. <coughs> Another achievement is the establishment of the Journal of Popular Science. Now, the challenges uh, that this uh, center will face or is facing now currently is um, the office space. Five people will be joining in and uh, that is the only office that is uh, made available for CNRRD. Uh, the director now is not even having access to this office. And uh, with these additional new people coming in, they will need office space, laboratory space, computers and ICT equipment. And uh, as also mentioned there, there needs to be a re um, the policy has to be revised. Future plans, they will continue to serve the staff and students in research engage in ongoing research projects for the uh, center staff. They're going to um, source external funding. 
and work in collaboration with the partners NARI and NRI, DAL, CIC, CCIL, FPDA, and others. And uh, they also wish to sustain the publication of the um, JOPS. I think that's all for um, the presentation. Thank you. This brings us to the end of the presentations that we schedule for, for today. Uh, we have two recent centers who did not present their, their research uh, simply because we um, are still figuring a way out of this to strengthen uh, the research, those research centers. Um, and so we have um, it's the Center for Ethnomathematics uh, Research Center, and I must uh, acknowledge Mrs. Priscilla Sakopa, who was acting director for this center previously, and now she's moved to school liaison, and the, the directorship is vacant. We need to fill in the position. This brings us to the end of the presentations that we schedule for, for today. Uh, we have two recent centers who did not present their, their research uh, simply because we um, are still figuring a way out of this to strengthen uh, the research, those research centers. Um, and so we have um, it's the Center for Ethnomathematics uh, Research Center, and I must uh, acknowledge Mrs. Priscilla Sakopa, who was acting director for this center previously, and now she's moved to school liaison, and the, the directorship is vacant. We need to fill in the position. So we also um, acknowledge uh, Dr. Lili Zhao, who is the director for Center for Creative Social Media, who is uh, not here, um, but we hope that in the future we can facilitate an avenue. Now, you've, you've heard from the School of Science uh, to the Humanities to Education, um, School of Postgraduate, there is so much rich opportunity for you know for you students to explore and to engage and to pursue it if you're interested in um, developing a career in research. Um, so with this, the Samara Research Institute will provide the overall coordination for all research activities and programs at the university. And we have big plans. We're working on the endowment fund, which is um, a mechanism to uh, to take big money, like 100 million or 500 million. You know, we are we dream big, and we want to bring more money to the university so that we can make this a university research in probably three or five years time. So we began to, um, we have received two expressions of interest from uh, two qualified, very high caliber people um, internationally, one internationally, one locally, to develop the endowment fund for the University of Garoka, and we will be making a submission to the top management team to endorse these offices, one of them, uh, to set up the endowment fund, with, which will also have the policies uh, for uh, safekeeping of the money and also develop the business harm or the business structure for us to go out and find the money. So this is something exciting that's happening, so you should be excited as well. <laughs> Secondly, um, for those academics who are interested in doing research, the opportunity uh, for you is here now. Um, the University Research and Publication Committee has got greater support from the top management team with increased funding, and we will be um, inviting you to submit your research proposals. And so if you want to do research at the university and academic research, you have to work very closely with the schools and the research centers to align your division or your research interests with the research fields that have been de developed and defined and presented by the presenters today. So um, again, this is not restricted to research, specific research fields, but why, what we would like to encourage at the university is for you to be forming clusters of research teams. You know, let, let's get some research teams uh, based on uh, research teams or research groups uh, and align yourselves or connect with other researchers um, so that you look at one dimension, let's say, in a field you look at 
different dimensions of that research fields so that you can become authority in that field. Um, and at most so you can place the University of Goroka as a leader in research uh, when you publish those papers. Um, secondly, we also would like to encourage postgraduate students to work very closely with the academics we have and the expertise that we have in the schools and the institute. Now, if you work as a research team based on one perspective or one aspect of, of the big field, and if you're guided by a senior academic or um, academics in the schools and in the institutes and the research centers, then you increase your opportunity or your chance of getting research funding from the university research and publication basket. So that's an information for the postgraduate students. Work closely with expertise that we have in the research centers, in the schools, uh, and in the institutes. In that way, the academics get their research output, they supervise you, you also get your research output as a thesis or dissertation, and you co-publish, and you also increase your research and publication output. So in this way, it's a win-win kind of situation for all of us. Also, we are looking at, um, we are beginning to bring money for research into the university. We're working very closely with the PhD Research Science and Technology Secretariat, which is the government unit that regulates uh, national research policies and national research agendas. And so we have made submissions. We've got some funding last year um, based on the submissions we made and we will continue to pursue this. Now, we've distributed the national research agenda to all the research center directors, um, and so we hope that you will find time to have conversation with them, so you can also access those national research agenda. And, and so we ask that you align your research interest with the research fields that are being developed in the schools and in the um, institutes and um, research centers, they're all aligned with the national research agenda. In that way, we increase opportunity for research funding at the national level. The Somaro Research Institute was named in the honor of uh, the founding Prime Minister of Papua New Guinea, Sir Michael Thomas Somare, uh, to remember his legacy and also to continue to promote and advocate for, for the great leadership he's provided in bringing Papua New Guinea to independence. And this year for um, Somara's anniversary, first anniversary, we have had tributes um, of articles written by academics. Dr. Sagil contributed a beautiful tribute article, academic article, which we published in the newspaper. Um, also students have written points and articles and reflections to celebrate uh, the legacy and the, good, uh, the great leadership uh, that uh, Michael Smara provided. And this will be compiled into a book. We have a book of tribute of points and reflections for Michael Samari that's been written by students and staff members of the University of Duroka. And we will launch this during the launching of the Samara Research Institute. Uh, so keep an eye out for it. And we also have a um, modern state of art precinct uh, architectural design for Samara Research Institute, which we will not disclose any images and information about it. But during the launching of it, we'll share with you the images and we'll share with you the grand plan of the building itself and the 3D animation of um, the Michael Samara Research Institute which is going to be very spectacular. It's going to house postgraduate research, international researchers coming to UOG. Also, it will house all the research centers in the new Samara Research Institute, uh, and it has also other great things as well. And uh, we will celebrate that when we have the launching of the Samara Research Institute, together with the groundbreaking ceremony um, for the Central Building Administration. Once when the Vice Chancellor confirms a date for the availability of the Prime Minister, Right Honourable uh, James Marape, then we will uh, invite you all to participate in this celebration uh, for the great achievements for the University of Goroka for uh, the 25th uh, Silver Jubilee uh, celebration now and into the future.